I'm Rosalie Paul. I'm here from Greater Brunswick PeaceWorks. I want to just let you know that we're here today as part of a global day of resistance. We resist the passage of a federal budget that gives over 50% of our discretionary dollars to the military. The budget of the United States reflects our nation's care for the common good of her people. At its best, a budget is a moral document, and so we are dismayed and frightened by what our leadership sees as priorities. We gathered to share our concern for our country at a time when Martin Luther King's words continue to hold enormous power. And I quote, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on social uplift approaches spiritual death, unquote. Can we turn this ghastly tide he also said, we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. Can we do that? Can we do that for our planet and for our children and our grandchildren? Let us see now, William Penn said all those years ago, what love can do. We face three interconnected crises. Until we see how they are linked, we won't have the tools to solve them. The climate crisis, the crisis of funding, social needs, and most profoundly, the crisis of militarism. As part of our resistance today, we present speakers who can eloquently raise our awareness. We urge the media to give this airtime and print space. We urge all of you hearing this to find your way to whatever kind of activism is yours to offer. This rally is presented in honor of our longtime friend and activist, Sally Breen, who couldn't be with us today, but whose spirit and energy gave this rally shape. Thank you, Sally. And the first speaker from Veterans for Peace, Richard Clement. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Clement, and I am president of the Tom Sturdivant chapter of Maine Veterans for Peace. This is the founding chapter of Veterans for Peace, for which, sure to eat it. which was started here in Maine in 1985. Today we have 130 chapters across the U.S. and five international chapters. We have a national office in St. Louis. Our organization is dedicated to building a culture of peace, healing the wounds of war and exposing the true costs of war, which are a far cry from just monetary. To achieve these goals, we are pledged to do so with nonviolent means. Let me tell you a few of the things VFP is doing locally, nationally, and internationally. Two weeks ago, we partnered with the Elders Group and the First Paris UU Church here in Portland on the 50th anniversary of Reverend King's speech, Beyond Vietnam, A Time to Break Silence. We remembered the groundbreaking speech by reading it aloud. I am sure many in attendance in the church felt a little disheartened that his words could have been spoken yesterday, that so little has changed in those 50 years since he wrote the speech and the 49 years since he was assassinated. As he wrote, the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today, my own government, the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism. Another local project of our chapter is producing an 18-month calendar. Each month, we'll have a portrait of an American activist. These portraits come from the work of Maine artist Robert Shetterly, who has painted the great series titled, Americans Who Tell the Truth. These calendars will be given free to guidance counselors in high schools across Maine. They will expose students to common folk who have stood up, spoken up, and made this a better country with their actions. Other chapters are actively engaging and in informing the public about drone warfare and the predominant killing of civilians with sudden death from the sky. They gather in protest outside Creech Air Force Base in Nevada and Hancock Air Base in New York and get arrested when they step over the line. Others have created a campaign called Veterans Challenge Islamophobia. All veterans who agree that bigotry and religious intolerance must be challenged are welcome. Muslims are our friends and allies, not our enemy. 
Internationally, VFP members have traveled to Jeju Island in South Korea, where a deep water port has been built, and Okinawa, Japan, where a major expansion of a base is underway. Both of these military sites have been overwhelmingly opposed by the local populations, but to no avail. Our members have been warmly received and welcomed as we stand in solidarity to American military expansion on foreign soil. The U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation awarded its 2016 Peace Prize to Veterans for Peace. Our national president commented, for over 30 years, Veterans for Peace has been the only organization that has consistently led the peace movement in an effort to abolish war, eventually eliminate nuclear weapons, expose the real costs of war, and stand in solidarity with veterans and victims of war, and to keep our nation from interfering overtly and covertly into the fears of other nations. We oppose the President's obscene $54 billion plan to increase Pentagon spending. The U.S. already spends about three times the amount of any other country spends on their defense, and more than nine times the next nine countries combined. This colossal tax waste comes at the expense of such areas as environmental protection and education. Our tax money to fund endless wars will only make the rich richer. The rest of us get poorer by each generation. Thank you.